Yo, what's going on? Today, I have a chance to talk with Dakota Linworm. She recently came in third at the US Marathon Trials, securing her spot on Team USA. So she'll be heading to the Olympics in Paris later this summer to compete in the marathon. In this interview, we're going to talk about her race. We'll do a race recap. And then we'll also go over some of the shoes she's been training in, the shoes she raced in, her sunglasses, of course. And we'll also talk a little bit about dog parks and smooth jazz. So it's a pretty fun conversation. It goes a little bit all over the place, but it's a lot of fun. I hope you enjoy this conversation with Dakota Linworm. Hey, Dakota, thanks for taking time with us. How are you today? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me on. Well, first of all, I want to say congratulations on a fantastic race in Orlando. Uh, we were all so happy for you. We've been cheering for you like crazy for the, over the years. Uh, and it was so great to see you have such great success. Yeah, thank you. It was uh, really fun to see you out there, too. I think I caught a glimpse of you running alongside a couple okay. of times with your, your camera. So it's always fun to see like familiar faces out there. I think it, you know, it's a little bit more inspiring than just a random go Dakota. <laughs> Okay. All right. Cool. Uh, well, what I wanted to have you do today is do a bit of a race recap. And I know you've been interviewed a bunch of times already about the race, but I had a couple of like specific questions as we go. So hopefully we could start off um, with that, if, if that's okay. Yeah, that sounds great to me. All right. So uh, the first, I want to talk about that first 2.2 mile loop. Uh, I had a spot camped out right by the start and I could see the entire flood of all the runners coming by. And you were like, almost dead center at the front coming out through that uh, start start line. Um, can you tell me a little bit about like the energy? What was it like coming out of the gate when everyone was seemed to be so excited, both from the competitor side, but also from the fan side as well? Yeah, I thought um, in comparison to Atlanta, I thought the first little loop was a little bit quieter. Um, I remember in Atlanta, like from the gun, it was so loud, like almost to a point where I couldn't hear myself and it felt like overwhelming, where I think because we didn't repeat this little 2.2 mile loop, mm -hmm. there weren't as many fans out there. So it was still, there was a great energy, but it wasn't overwhelming and I don't think it gave me so much energy that I got carried away. I think we saw a couple athletes uh, get a little carried away from the energy, but um, I really liked it. And of course, like those first, like, like that first mile is all about like getting your positioning, finding who you want to run by and um, kind of, you know, getting the lay of the land. And I felt like I got in a really nice groove right away and got super comfortable where I was at. It's such a rush of people that go by for this race. Uh, and when I saw it in Atlanta as well, it was just like almost like a stampede. That's what it feels like from as a spectator. But like when you're in that, is it because I've been in races where there's a little bit of jostling in the front and I'm way further back. So it's like it's not like anyone's, you know, really competing for any sort of prize where I am. But there still might be some jostling. Is there anything like that that's going on for the trials? I would say there's jostling, just people trying to find their groove, but nothing like aggressive in a way where it's like pushing. Cause I think if you kind of get intertwined in that, it's, it's detrimental on both ends. So nobody wants to be having like this be a contact sport for sure. But there's definitely like hand motions, like, Hey, I'm coming through here. Like, Hey, I need a little space. Um, all in kindness for sure. Okay. Um, and then after that 2.2 mile loop, then you did three laps of an eight mile loop. Um, I think I saw you guys for the first time after the start, then we tried to find another spot on that bigger loop. And I think I saw you guys around mile nine. And by that point, uh, we already, see, we had, I've been watching the feed, uh, on my phone and, um, I'd seen there's been a little bit of movement, but there's still a very large pack coming through. Um, Around that mile nine point or so, can you tell me about what you're feeling at that point? Are you feeling hot already? Does it feel claustrophobic because there's such a big pack there? Can you just give us a sense of what it's like to be in that spot? Yeah, I wasn't feeling warm yet. I was super comfortable with the pace. We kind of settled in somewhere between like 525 to 530. Um, and I wasn't taking the lead at that point at all. So I felt really, really comfortable. I was a little bit like, okay, we can't all run this pace. There's no way this big group of women can hold 525. And I kept looking around being like, oh, like people need to start dropping off so this race can start unfolding. But um, yeah, I was super surprised at how big of a pack it was still by like, especially even by like halfway mark. At that point, 
I remember running along with the pack uh, and trying to film it a little bit there. And for me, I was so excited about this race because it's like all my favorite athletes are are in one la- one race at the same time. And um, I'm looking at this pack and I'm like wanting to cheer for everyone. And I'm out of breath because you guys are much so much faster than I am. And you guys are running at my mile race pace. What did, what do you guys hear when you're running through a crowd like at mile nine of the marathon trials? I feel like I don't get like a ton of specific cheers the way that like Kira D'Amato does or Emily okay. Sisson. That those are the word, like the names that I'm hearing the most or like Sarah. Um, but otherwise, you're just hearing sometimes in those big crowded areas it's just like noise just okay. nothing specific just ah Great job, <laughs> and, okay. um, you know i think if you tune into it you can kind of hear but even where i knew my family was like they were um kind of in the loudest parts of the sections or like of the course and i couldn't hear a single word they said to me at all um when it's too crowded you just don't hear anything other than the excitement of the people oh okay um, and then your coach, was your coach watching, was he in one spot and watching like with your family or where was your coach? He was on his own. Um, if you kind of picture the way the course was, if you think of it like a U, he was on like the outside of the U where it was a little bit quieter out by like the airport. So when we ran past him, he was very easy to hear. Okay. Um, I wanted to get out there but there were some like last minute security changes and they wouldn't weren't letting people kind of move around as much as we all thought we could um but on that part out by the airport i had run the loop a couple of days beforehand and i could tell that it was going to be hot and sunny is that the sense that you guys got out there that that was like the hottest part of the course definitely there was no shade and of course it was also the quietest so i feel like that's when you have the most time to think about it um there was, yeah, like no reprieve out on that part, especially right by the airport. And then coming through on that first loop, you would have picked up bottles already by then? Yeah, we would have had three bottle stations by okay. then. Uh, and what were in your bottles? I used Tailwind, and I was also adding, um, I added a, a one packet of LMNT throughout all the six of my bottles. So an extra thousand grams of, milligrams of sodium. For all, wait, for all of your bottles? A uh, total. So, like, I took okay. one oh, LMNT okay. packet because okay. they're very uh, dense with sodium. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was like, wait, did you just take 8,000 milligrams of salt? No, my kidneys <laughs> were <laughs> shut down. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, that, yeah, I was like, wait, I think I heard that wrong. Yeah. Okay. Um, and any gels taped to any of your bottles or no? No gels taped to my bottles. I always throw one in my sports bra just in case I miss a bottle. There's like kind of like a backup or sometimes when I, this is silly, but when I get like bored or a little bit tired, I kind of take it out just to like chew on it um, just to give me something to do. But I don't, I didn't use one at all during this. So marathon. you weren't bored during the trials this time? No, we were a little <laughs> bit too busy. There's a little bit too much at stake, I think. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, tell me about the second lap through. That would have been like mile 10 to 18 or something like that. How, how, what was going on at that point in the race? Yeah. So we came through, um, kind of like where the finishing stretch is and there happened mm-hmm. to be a Puma watch party right there. Uh, mm-hmm. they had a really great spot. My family was there. So when we started that second lap, I had just seen my aunt and my dad and I, I'm obviously an emotional runner and I got really excited and all of a sudden I was like, oh, 525, it's feeling really easy. And I took the lead and immediately was like, this is exactly what I said I would not do. So <laughs> I then kind of just took a step back. Um, I did lead, me and Fiona kind of took charge for, I don't know, maybe two or three miles, but it was really two or three miles of me like slowing down and being like, guys, come on. I don't, I don't want to do the work up here. So, um, I had to kind of settle in. Um, and then as that lap progressed, that's when Fiona towards the end of it started making a big push and just, I didn't feel like that was in the cards for me. And, um, towards the end of that lap is when we really started to separate, I think as a group. Yeah, because I think I saw you um, right before like that final, there's like one more right turn that you make and then it's a long stretch towards like kind of like the finish line or where the loop ends. I saw you wherever that part is. And at that point, I think you were behind Carolyn Rotich at that point, maybe. What's going through your mind at that point? Because when I saw you there, I think you were maybe in fourth or fifth place at that point. 
Um, what's going through your mind there, knowing that you know top three are what make the team, and you know you're heading into the final lap? I um, honestly, I was hurting pretty bad. Go like going into that final lap. I remember being like a whole nother loop. Are you kidding me? Like it seems <laughs> so so far. Um, huh. But I was just trying to keep uh, Coach Lundo's like words and advice in my head. He he told me before earlier that week that like uh, and it's something I know from running the marathon a bunch of times that a lot happens in those last ten to eight miles. So I was just trying to stay positive and know like it's not over until we're at the finish line and um, just try to keep my head in the game. And when Carolyn passed me she did give me a lot of encouragement and was like, Hey, let's work together. Let's, um, catch these girls. Like they can come back to us. So I was really thankful for her because I felt like she kept a little bit of positivity in my mind. Now I've heard a lot of different athletes talk about the encouragement they got as they were getting past or that they gave as they were passing to people that they're competing against for spots on the team. Um, is that something that you saw in the last trials in Atlanta? Uh, yeah, a little bit. I was quite a bit farther back in, mm -hmm. uh, I'd say, in more no man's land. I was kind okay. of in like a, I think the only person I saw in the second half of the race was like Jordan Hesse, and I was okay. so um, starstruck by her, I couldn't say mm -hmm. anything. <laughs> um, well, she was wearing like the uh, the Kobe kit that day, too, she wasn't was. she? Yeah, she was. Yeah, amazing. I remember passing her and being like, this is somebody I've looked up to for a long time. And mm -hmm. I was like, you know, my cat got my tongue kind of thing. Uh, mm -hmm. But I think it's pretty normal to hear that type of encouragement in any race because it's like, of course, we're all competing, but we're also all competing against the marathon. Um, anybody mm -hmm. who's done a marathon knows just how hard it is, how much you put into that day. And I don't know, it, it's just, we're not the type of sport to get really, you know, mean with each other. I feel like we all respect each other. Is there any other chatter going on, like when the pack is a little bit bigger, like like maybe rewind a loop, like when there's that large group and you're looking around and thinking, this is a lot of people. Is there any ever chatter going on there or is everyone pretty much just focused on what they're trying to do for the day? I'd say everybody's focused and not a lot of chatter going on. I think I said something to Annie like in, in the first lap because we had her and I had kind of fallen off from the lead pack. They dropped a really fast mile and we kind of worked together on our way up. So I think I'd met, like maybe said something to her, but she's about the only person I'd talk to in a marathon. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Then let's go to the last loop. Then um, at that point, I moved over to try and get a spot closer to the finish line. You guys still had another eight miles to go. So I didn't really see a lot what that happened. Uh, in terms of on the course until you guys got right towards the finish. But tell me a little bit about getting out towards the airport that one last time. What was that like? Um, it was by the time we got out to the airport, I was kind of in like that third and fourth and fifth, fifth position. It was me, Carolyn and Betsy were kind of all battling it out. And I had taken the charge of that group and I was in the so I was technically in the third position, but definitely fighting for third. Um, and I saw Lundo, um, like right next to the airport on our way out still. And he was just beside himself. I felt like he was, he's somebody who's very even keeled and kind of quiet. And he was obviously losing his mind. He was super excited for me. So I think that gave me a lot of energy. And then we went into that little like lollipop, if you want to call it that. And then we started heading back towards and I saw Mary Kate from Boston. She's like the elite coordinator. And she was just so like a calm presence. And I was like, okay, like I felt like just seeing again, a familiar face was like very centering for me. And then you take a right. And then like you had mentioned, you have a very long straightaway before you make the final. Right. Um, and that was where I kind of felt like I had dropped bed. See, of course, you're not really looking back, but I could still feel Caroline on my shoulder. And somewhere pretty early after taking that first right, I heard somebody say three seconds back. And I was like, that was the first time I realized, like, I'm dropping fourth place and I'm sitting in third. I'm making the team if the race ends right now. And then I heard, like, seven seconds back. 10 seconds, 15. And all the while, I was like, this is really great intel. This is exactly what I want to hear. But I'm like, don't think about 
what's happening in this moment because you don't want to celebrate too early or like, you know, sit in your, you know, get lazy or start slowing up because you know, you're making the team. Um, so then I guess I got to that final, right. And I was hurting really bad. I could not get my legs speed up. I could not get any turnover. And I just was kind of head down. Don't celebrate all business until like I was at the line. And I swear that last 600 meters was like another marathon. It felt like. (laughs) Well, I feel like a lot happened in the last 600 meters of this race, more than any other race than I think I've ever seen. Cause I remember as I was looking through my footage, I would have filmed people as they would come through. And I saw people right kind of around that spot, right between like 600 and 400 meters to go. But that wouldn't be the order in which they finished for a lot of people. And so I just think Mm -hmm. that there was so much that I just felt like that. I like a long straightaway to the finish, but that might have been a little bit too long. It was. I looked up and I was like, oh, my goodness, that's so far. So, Like I said, I just kept my eyes down and I was like, just look up like every time you think it's been like a minute. (laughs) Yeah, Um, so I was all business for sure. uh, I have a ton of questions on like that maybe last 600 to 800 meters of course. Um, it, or in that spot mill city running had like set up a bunch of tents and they were all there did you see them coming as you were coming through yeah i had uh, noticed them earlier and i heard mm-hmm. especially on that last go around the dakota dakota <laughs> and it was like you guys like i love the support but i i think i was in such a panic of like My dreams are about to come true and I don't feel in control if somebody passed me right now. So I, um, I was so thankful to have them there and it like just means the world to me that, you know, Mill City and the Minnesota running community is such a fan. That, I mean, I, I thought it was really cool. Uh, they were waving, waving the new Minnesota flag out there. And I just, I had a vantage point. I was standing on top of like a, like a brick wall. So I had kind of a overhead view uh, of seeing it down there. And I was like, this is like, you can't write it up better than this um, to have that as part of the, the home stretch. And I thought it was just super cool. And I'd heard other people talk about how loud it was coming through that section. And I didn't know if you had heard what they were saying at all, but I'm glad to know that you did. Yeah, yeah, it actually just gives me goosebumps to think about how loud that final stretch was because it was like so incredibly loud. And at the same time, I was like, I just want a little bit of silence to just get, <laughs> grind this out. <laughs> um, did anyone try to give you a little American flag to run in with? Because, you know, I watched the recap and I saw uh-huh. Lenny got a flag. And yeah. if there was a person there to give me a little flag, I was just blacking out and I had no okay. idea. <laughs> Cause I remember, I think it was Jake Riley in, in Atlanta that, um, grabbed a flag and then he regretted it immediately. Cause he was like, this race isn't over yet. And so he's like, they'd be really embarrassing if I grabbed the flag and then lost it in the last like 400 meters. So I didn't know if like you were just like, no, and tried to like stiff arm it away or, or, or what happened with that? Cause I didn't see you with one as you came through. No. And I guess I don't know that Emily or Fiona had gotten one either. They may mm-hmm. have, but I, okay. yeah, if somebody had tried to hand it to me, I was to- so blacked out. And so just like laser focused on running okay. forward. Okay. One more, one more question about the, the finishing line. Um, as I was looking through my footage, I saw that you were coming through a little bit past the Mill City tent. Someone was holding up a baby so that they could see, like, above all the other people. And that there was, like, a baby, like, in a onesie, like, as you were running by. Did you see a baby? Did it look like someone was trying to give you a baby to hold as you were coming through the finish line? I did not. Okay. <laughs> I, I did not see that. And I never would have taken anybody's baby. <laughs> But I'm glad the baby got a good view. <laughs> the baby had a better view than I did. I'll tell you because I it was there was so many people there. It was tough, but uh, it was really funny to see like a baby getting like shoved at you in the finish. <laughs> that is so so funny. No, right, I I'll, I didn't see that. I'll send I'll send you a picture of that. Um, so yeah, you can take for a look sure. at it. Maybe you recognize the baby. I don't know. Maybe maybe I know the baby. <laughs> Um, you mentioned that your dad was, uh, there to watch the race with you as part of like your family and your support that was there. And I remember you telling me that at grandma's this year, he had gone out the night before to write some messages for you in chalk. Did he do anything like that for you this year? He, he didn't, I think it's like obviously a little bit more serious and I guess maybe he could have went and chalked the streets, but, uh, no, he was a little bit more serious this time. Grandma's is just so like fun and easygoing that I, 
I know that they don't mind that when he does that. So I okay. think you just want to do abide by all rules. <laughs> okay, makes sense. Makes sense. Yeah. Um, but I did see that someone had a big head made of you. Um, yeah, I saw a big was, Dakota face. In, yeah, in some of the finish big, line photos. yeah I, I already think I have a big head. So when somebody <laughs> makes it bigger, I'm like, this is so unnecessary. <laughs> but yeah, um, Destination Marathons, uh, there's a company that kind of has supported me through my career and they made okay. a bunch of big heads to pass around. <laughs> oh, that's super fun. Uh, that's amazing. Yeah. Um, I saw, I can't remember who posted it. But I saw there was a picture of you um, then at the finish talking with Annie after the race. Um, it, can you share what you guys were talking about, like in the immediate moments after the race? Yeah, I think we were just, um, you know, telling each other how proud of each other we were. She she told me that somewhere along the way, somebody told her that I was in third and that really hyped her up. And I'm so proud of her for a 10th place finish at her first Olympic trials is incredible like there's so much pressure on you at the olympic trials it's top three or bust and i think a lot of people um flush the race down the toilet if it's not going the way that they wanted and for her to top that out i felt really proud of her um and i think we were just sharing those sentiments for sure oh that's awesome um i mean i i think i thought she had a really great race out there as well um in the tough conditions um, can we switch gears a little bit and talk about the sunglasses for a moment? <laughs> the sunglasses that absolutely stole the show, which is yeah. so funny. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, so, uh, I'm guessing that like, uh, there isn't like Puma sunglasses that you could have worn or anything like that. No, I don't have any, they may have some and they just never okay. sent them to me. Oh, okay. Um, and to be honest, like if I got Puma sunglasses, I would cherish them and like probably enjoy yeah. them where mm -hmm. these were solely bought because I just wanted to be able to throw them off and not oh, care okay. that I threw them away, <laughs> um, uh -huh. which is why they're just cheap $15. <laughs> <Amazon> <laughs> Did you purchase. know that like sh shortly after the links went out for what your sunglasses were, those sunglasses sold out? Yeah, I am actually, um, like, I wish I could see the numbers, I guess, okay. like how many sunglasses <laughs> were sold, uh, which is so funny. Cause yeah, I literally bought them just to throw away and I didn't expect them to pop off the way they did. Yeah, they certainly did. Um, do you have, do you ever do Amazon affiliate links? I don't know if your contract permits you to do that, but. No, I haven't. I don't know if my contract allows it or not. So I, I should have done that in hindsight. I bet I would have made a nice little paycheck there. Yeah, you're you're probably missing out on tens of dollars by not having yeah. an affiliate code that we could share yeah. for you. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Are you going to be racing in the same sunglasses? You think for, so, for Paris? Um. So once they sold out, I had a woman reach out to me on Instagram who her name is Stephanie and she has been following following me since like 2021 and been like in contact with me and a big fan asking for the link to those. And I was like, ah, okay. oh, I know that they're sold out. And I actually sent her the, my exact son, like my pair oh, oh um, my just goodness. because she's been following me since 2021 when nobody had any reason to care about who I was. So I was like, this is just such an easy thank you I could do for her. Um, I did then just order a different colorway just in case I wanted to continue to wear those, but I have had okay. a sunglass company reach out and they were sending me a pair of like similar sunglasses. So okay. we'll see if I decide to wear those. I just like something that doesn't slip down my face or bounce when I run. Mm -hmm. So I have a pretty low bar for the type of glasses I like okay. to wear. <laughs> okay. Is it, would be, it would still be something that you would be able to throw off if you needed to during the race? I think so. Especially if, um, you know, if I like of, I think we're going to try to create some sort of relationship where I could get sent more if I had to okay. throw them yeah. off. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, we'll see. Well, that certainly makes a lot of sense to me. Um, before we start, Talking about Paris, I'd like to um, rewind a little bit and get back to the training block and uh, talk about some of the shoes that you trained in. Let's start, though, with what you raced in. I think I know what they are, but um, I don't think that they were kind of off embargo at the time that you raced. But I think you can you tell us about them now? What did you race in? Yeah, I wore the Puma Deviate Elite 3s. They're, um, I think they were officially released. They have to be in order for us to race in them. Um, so they probably did a, like a small sellout mm -hmm. of those shoes and they're like officially like technically on market. Great. Great. Um, and 
clearly you did well in them, but did you enjoy them? I love them. I've been a Deviate Elite fan from the beginning versus the Fast Stars. I think they're the thing is, is they're both really great options, and it was a very difficult decision for me. Um, they just feel a little bit more like an extension of my body um where the fast stars i do have to think like okay you have to use a shoe like lean forward mm -hmm. in your stance get the power out of the shoe where the deviate elites for me it's just like um they're just like home for my feet i mm -hmm. guess if that makes sense and the the upgraded version the the three is like slightly more stack height and a slightly more aggressive plate so it it does take on some of the power of the fast star i think Nice, nice. I haven't tried that one yet, so I'm looking forward to it. I, I really do like the Fast R2. I do I'm too. very excited to buy that one. But um, and and previously I was like, okay, Deviate Nitro Elite Three, the regular Elite Three. Like, uh, I I enjoyed one and two okay, and I wasn't too excited. But then I was like, well, I don't know. There's a pretty good yeah. day by Puma athletes in that shoe, so maybe I need to take a take a more careful look at these shoes. I'm excited. Yeah, and the, if you like the Fast Stars for their foam, it's they're taking the Fast Star 2's foam and putting it in the Deviant Elite 3, um, Ooh, okay. which is what I think the biggest upgrade mm. is, because in the lab, what they told us is that in like minute one or hour three, that foam is just as durable and responsive, um, uh -huh. which is something they haven't been able to replicate in any other shoe. Very cool. Very cool. All yeah. right. Well, I'm going to have to make some phone calls, make sure I get that shoe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, but in addition to what you were racing in, you were training in at various Puma shoes. Can you tell us a little bit about uh, the breakdown for which shoes you were reaching for most? Yeah, I'm a big velocity girl. I think that's kind of like my everyday trainer. Uh, I can do fast long runs in them and, you know, easy, easy recoveries. And then I was doing a little bit in the magnifies also. They, uh, I've got some Achilles issues, which is just, you know, the price you pay when you're running 130 miles a week. And the, the magnifies kind of put a little bit of a Band-Aid on a bullet hole with my Achilles. But they're a little clunky for me to wear on most recovery runs. So they're kind of like my double shoe for sure. And then workouts are either the Fast R or the Deviate Elites. Um, yeah. Well, let's start talking about Paris. Um, are... Have you had a chance to sit down with your coach and start talking about like when does training start, like what changes to make, anything like that? So we are uh, chatting officially on Sunday, but we've been texting okay. back and forth, of course. Like okay. uh, we've we've got plans in place to go to Paris. Puma's actually going to throw like a bit of a, a party in Paris in April, so we're going to go do like a course tour out there. And oh, cool. I started training already. This is my first week back, and. Um, yeah, I think we plan to talk on Sunday. My hope is to stay up at those 130 mile weeks and save seem, seem to treat me pretty well. <laughs> okay. Now, I think I remember we've talked previously how that you feel like a strength of yours is warm weather racing. Not necessarily that you like hot weather racing, but that you're you're good at it. Is that right? Is that the so, accurate way to put it? Yeah, absolutely. I okay. definitely think it's a strength in a way where it just doesn't seem to affect me the way it affects other people. Like I, I heard many people complain about how hot it was at the trials. And there were moments where I was like, Oh, maybe I should have wore some sunscreen, but I was never like, Oh, I'm dying out here. Like I never felt super hot. Did you not have sunscreen on during this race? No, but I really wish I had. Cause I, <laughs> I did get a little bit sunburned, <laughs> okay, okay. but um, like sunscreen's like weird when you're running. Sometimes it makes yeah. you feel a little icky. Yeah. So Okay, just wanted to, yeah. to check on that. But um, so for for Paris, I mean, it's probably going to be a very hot race. Then, um, do you think that plays into your strengths? Then, absolutely, and I love that it's also going to be a challenging course because I think it does really level the playing field. Nobody's going to be going out there to run sub two twenty, in my opinion. I would be surprised if that happens. So. I think that makes it really exciting for, you know, us back of the Packers, if you want to say that, uh, <laughs> in terms of like the, you know, on a world stage, I'm kind of probably like one going to be one of the slower athletes there. So um, I think it can really open it up and create like a Molly Seidel moment, you know. Okay. Um, have you had a chance to talk to Molly at all? Uh, her and I DM'd a little bit on Instagram and she was okay. congratulating me and, you know, I definitely hope to pick her brain and. Mm -hmm. get as much experience from her as possible 
Very cool. And then have you talked to Fiona at all about um, since you've seen her in Orlando? No, we haven't. We haven't talked at all. Uh, okay. Allie on the run. I did her podcast and she's like, okay. you guys need a group chat between yeah. Emily, Fiona and me. So we'll have yeah. to get that going at some point. All right. I'm, I'm always fascinated with the group chats. I think that's one of the most fun things about kind of like modern distance running for some reason. It's not that important, but I just find it so fascinating. Yeah, absolutely. It's fun that we can have such a camaraderie and I think the marathon for the Olympics, I'm looking forward to it so deeply because it really is more like a team aspect, like a, a medal for either of those two women is a medal for me, it seems like in the same way. So it, I think it really creates like more of a team aspect. Can I, ask, can I s rewind a little bit to the preparation for Orlando? A question I forgot to kind of um, ask about. I'm not sure where this question is really going to go, but did, you were there for like a month before the race is that right i was there for like two and a half months oh okay. i, went, so I think i may have been the first person like the first person to relocate to florida i went the day after thanksgiving oh you were there a long time yes yeah yeah um do you have a dog did you bring a dog down there i did you? yeah so he is now eight months old so at the time he was oh, okay. like, like about six months old so we drove the 24-hour drive down to you drove we a went puppy to down to orlando yeah, it was. We went to Ormond <laughs> Beach first and spent okay. a couple of weeks on the ocean. But it, okay. he doesn't really love the car, if you can imagine okay. that. <laughs> <laughs> now, I thought I had heard someone else mention that there was a dog park that a bunch of marathoners were meeting at regularly. So uh, once it seemed like everybody got down there, Des reached mm -hmm. out to a bunch of us who had our dogs. And we did have mm -hmm. one dog party that she totally... Okay you know, created herself. And, okay. um, so it was me, Annie had her dog, Billy, um, Emily had her two dogs and, uh, then does of course had her two dogs. <laughs> that's amazing. That's me. That's quite a dog party. It was super fun. Um, uh, my dog, August, it was of course a puppy and he was a little shy, but he came out okay. of his shell by the end. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that's, it was super, that's so it was fun. super cute. Yeah. That's so fun. I don't, I don't know why that the idea of all these people getting together for a dog party is so exciting for me. Maybe, I, I don't know. Maybe it's because I miss my dog, but um, yeah. <laughs> that, that sounds like it was super fun. Um, are you going to be able to bring your, are you going to bring your dog to Paris? No, um, we'll okay. get like some sort of rover, have my, somebody watch him, I guess, okay. one of my teammates, maybe. Um, he, he would be too much on a plane for sure. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Um, one more question about the, the trials. Um, I, I think I heard you talk to my friend Lindsay Hine about, um, what you were like music to listen to before the race. And you mentioned you were listening to something chill cause you had watched the movie Gran Turismo. Yeah. Uh, I love it. Are you a Gran Turismo fan? Did you play I... the video game? Never played the video game, but okay. it was the like last movie. So when we were in Orlando, Annie and I were obviously living there, and our boyfriends came down, and we created a list of movies we wanted to watch. And it was okay. the last movie we had watched before we had to move out of our Airbnb. And I just like it was such a perfect last movie to watch because it's you know inspirational and yeah. um I don't know it was just such a great. Uh, I don't know, left us, le left us off on good vibes. And I loved the music. The whole soundtrack was great. And then <laughs> that's literally, I like Googled, I was like on Spotify, like Gran Turismo soundtrack and it was perfect. Yeah. Um, and then just to also reference that movie, he says like champagne is for the podium. Yeah. And yeah. after the race, I was like, where's my champagne bottle? <laughs> and my aunt uh, went out while we were getting dinner. She just disappeared. I was like, ah, I don't know where she went. Um, and she went around the corner to a liquor store to buy me a bottle of champagne. And I got to pop it. Um, oh, did you? Which was did really you spray special. it on everybody? I did not. I sprayed it just out into the open, took a sip okay. of it, and my dad grabbed it from me and sprayed me. So <laughs> I was not super happy with that. Because <laughs> then you're smelling like booze the rest of the day. Yeah, which, I mean, it was night at that time, and I was okay. smelling like booze for other reasons. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> All right. Oh, that's so funny. So, so were you listening to Kenny G? 
like soft yeah. jazz before yeah, absolutely. the race. Absolutely. Yeah, I that, literally listened to that soundtrack, the exact songs from that movie. <laughs> that's that's so <laughs> that's so funny. I love that. Story. I was like, you know what? It worked for Jan. It's gonna work yeah, for yeah. me. <laughs> And uh, hey, um, he took third, and I took third. So. Oh, there you go. I don't think it's a. I don't think it's a coincidence. Definitely I don't think so cause and effect there. That's yeah. that's so amazing. I love that story. Um, I I think that's a good place to end the conversation for today. Um, hopefully we'll be able to chat again once you kind of have more of a game plan set out in place. Um, and are a little bit further into training. I'd love to be able to touch base with you again as we as you get ready for Paris. And uh, I think I'm going to be out there too. So I'm, hopefully I'll see you out there uh, on the course cheering for Team USA. Yeah, that would be awesome. Well, thank you so much for all of your time today, Dakota. Uh, where can people find you if they want to follow along in your training, either on Strava or on Instagram? What's the best way to keep up with you? Um, if you want to follow my training, I am on Strava, um, Dakota Lindworm, and on Instagram, I try to post pretty regularly. Uh, I'm also Dakota Lindworm there, too. All right. Well, thank you so much, and uh, look forward to talking to you again soon.